be starting it up. Um, okay. So, thank you. Okay, started already. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Uh, just a minute. Please confirm you can see my screen, please. Can you see it? Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, it's okay. We can we can see your, your screen. Okay. okay, thank you so much. So um welcome to oh just a minute, it's still building. Let me quickly refresh. Just uh, the, I think internet connectivity. We should be back up in a few minutes. Or seconds rather. That's a minute. Let me just read what which is what's going on. I think it's probably my internet. Just a minute. So this is five. Okay. I'm going to be sharing your screen now. So sorry guys, I think, uh, okay, as someone said, you can see my screen, but I'm trying to refresh it. Uh, I know we're almost 20 minutes into the, uh, the session. Uh, so sorry, I wish I could um, speed up the, the internet, but I think I have an issue with it. Let me see. As someone, can you share the screen from your end? Yes, but I need to drop off then join again. But yes, no commitment. Okay. Just a minute, please, everyone. Yes. Okay. Um, so sorry, why we wait for someone to start sharing? Welcome. Welcome, Kenny. Oh, Kenny has always been in the call. My internet is quite bad today. Let me exit this. Hmm. Just a minute. Sorry. Oh, it's back up now. Okay, so um, my screen is working fine. And I think we should be back into the event. Please confirm you can see it now.
Um, anyone? Um, Kenny? Yeah, it's okay. We can see your yeah. screen. It's good. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Um, so sorry for the um, network. It's uh, um, unexpected. Well, we try to make with what you have. So uh, my name is Baba Tundi Ahmed, and I'm sure I'm, and some of is also here. Um, I'm MLSA from Nigeria. I'm a good MLSA from Nigeria, and I'll allow Anselmo to also introduce himself. Anselmo, over to you to introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Anselmo Freeman. I'm, I'm, I'm a good Microsoft Lancet ambassador from Kenya. Yeah. Back to you, Mami. Yeah, Anselmo, your, your mic is a little bit, um, you know, um, rumbling, like um, like there's something interfering with it. Should probably you can check that. Pardon? I said there's like an obstruction with your mic. It's not so clear. Oh, oh okay. You can it's still obstructed. Well, um, you can take care of that and move on with the event. So today we are going to be um, introducing you guys to infrastructure as a code on Azure with Azure and Bicep, um, to, with Bicep and Terraform. So sorry, I'm a little bit nervous with all the drama. So um, uh, I would move on to the agenda of today's um, event, which is explaining what infrastructure as a code means, overview of Terraform and uh, a demo of it, um, overview of Bicep and its demo, comparison between these two tools and also best practices and learning resources you can use to learn. So I'll get straight into it then. So what is infrastructure as a code? So um, I'm sure you guys have read um, the word infrastructure. Uh, on cloud computing, it's infrastructure means different services that are on the DAPAS cloud um, cloud platform. For example, on Azure, you can have virtual networks, you can have um, um, resource groups, you can have varieties of things. So each service that um, each um, cloud provider provides, it's, uh, or each service that the cloud provider, provider has is called an infrastructure. And these things then come together to accumulate um, a catalog of infrastructure that you can see on their website, on the portal, and they're about. But uh, many times you manage this um, infrastructure through graphical user interface, such as the website, to a portal, you click, you know, to inter interact with it or even create some of the infrastructure. So, but infrastructure as a code is then the new way of doing things, you know, uh, and a fast moving and rapid team, you want to manage and provision infrastructure resources through code. So let's say you're writing Python and you want to set a variable to, you know, how you set variables in Python. You can also do that on each cloud um, platform, such as Azure, Azure AWS and the rest of them through um, infrastructure as a code. So basically what infrastructure as a code allows you to, um, to configure uh, virtual machines, storage account, network components, and varieties of other things. Virtually anything you can create on a on, on the cloud um, uh, platform like uh, Azure and the rest of them, you can um, interact with them with infrastructure as a code. So uh, what are the benefits of infrastructure as a code? We have consistency and repeatability. So um, you, uh, I'll, so from my experience, I have been able to create, you know, probably deploy my personal website to, um, to Azure portal. That was when I was in, um, very new into the cloud ecosystem. But as time went on, I was able to, you know, um, learn about infrastructure as a code Some, uh, with Terraform, Bicep, which we are going to introduce today. So if you're working in a large scale team, um, you can have the same code because like everybody will know the state of infrastructure. Like let's say you provision a virtual machine and you've uploaded maybe some, uh, you've created some applications in it. You, each team in the company will be able to know the state of that virtual machine, the state of the resources you've created on, the, on Azure or AWS and the rest of them. And you, they'll be able to monitor it and also even um, get the, the the status at which um, the resources are being created. And also infrastructure as a code is very fast. It's faster, you know, with Azure portal, you do 
a click, you have to refresh, if your internet is bad, you have to wait for some time for the graphical user interface to appear. But with infrastructure as a code, you are actually working on your VS code or your ID to interact with it. And you know, it's very fast. It's more of like you writing your Python script or your JavaScript. It's very, very fast. And also with infrastructure as a code, there is room for collaboration. Like it's um some like I mentioned with the consistency and repeatability in a in a well in a modern team nowadays, the ability to collaborate um, al alongside different team members is very, very much important. And infrastructure as a code allows you to, so some person might be setting up a virtual machine, some person might be setting up the security, some person might be setting up the DevOps site. So with infrastructure as a code, it allows you to uh, all of them to be augmented in certain ways that everybody knows the status of when something has been created, you can fetch, the status you can also push yours as well and also with infrastructure as a code is scalable let's say you created a um, a website on azure app service with just um small compute power with infrastructure as a code you can you know change it and i'm still going to show you how a demo of how it works so it's easily scalable you can add more compute power you can decrease, decrease compute power you can configure a lot of things so that's those are the key benefits of infrastructure as a code and i'll jump into um the next one which is uh oh so sorry that was a mistake so i'll jump what are the types of infrastructure as a code um so it's like which one are, uh, is very much um noticeable nowadays and you know as a tech that is willing to upskill which one should you know about so there are varieties of ones that are prominent nowadays there's ansible there's chef there's puppet there's parker there's terraform which we are going to be um, discussing and doing a demo of today there's cloud formation which is um the uh, aws native infrastructure as a code to this bicep which is azure native infrastructure as a code to there's Cloudify, there's Cloud Stack. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know, at most best, you just need to know maybe one or two and you know, um, go with it. Um, so I'm going to go into, before I um, start my session on Terraform, I would like to ask a question. Uh, who among you guys have used any of the tools I mentioned and how, how was your experience? How was the learning curve and what, which projects have you created with any of the infrastructure as a code tool? So I'll post it and you know um, let you guys to contribute as well. So anyone? You can meet yourself. So I admit no one has worked has worked with an uh, an infrastructure as a code to anyone like cloud formation, terraform, bicep. Or if you've heard about it, is this the first time you're hearing it? Or is this the first time you are hearing a term called infrastructure as a code? I would like it to be interactive and engaging as well. Uh, anyone? Mukta, you've heard about it, Samuel. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I've heard a little, very little about Ansible, but um, I've not used it before. Okay, thank you so much, um, Samuel. Okay, so um, so I, I'll pretty much go ahead with everyone, which means that most of us are quite new to infrastructure as a code, and yeah, and there, um, there's every time to upskill. So um, we are going to be giving a crash course. We are not going to cover everything, but we are going to tell you what you need to know to. Uh, get started with infrastructure as a code. So uh, we start with Terraform. So I'm going to um, talk about Terraform and give a demo of it. So what is Terraform? So Terraform is an open source infrastructure as a code. For open source lovers, this is a tool, this is a tool that you can work with and it's very much accessible to anyone. You don't have to pay for it. So uh, it's an open source tool developed by Ashikop. It supports all cloud platforms, whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, whether it's GCP, whether it's, um, uh, I think, uh, whether it's uh, other 
cloud platforms as well. I can't remember the name of other ones, but I, from my, my experience, I've used Terraform with AWS and Microsoft Azure. I'm not so familiar with using it with GCP. So it allows you to um, create configuration. It can, it can allow you to create infrastructure on any of these cloud platforms. And also it can be used with configuration management tools such as Chef, Puppet, Puppet and Ansible. So sometimes um, some people might be of the opinion is that why are we seeing Ansible as a infrastructure, as a code tool, and also as a configuration management tool. So the term infrastructure as a code means you only create the resources, you know, you create the infrastructure, you don't configure it that much. So, but with some tools like Ansible, they allow you to create the infrastructure and also configure it. What do I mean by configuration? For example, when you create a Azure app service or a storage account, you might not necessarily do, you just create it, it's just dormant. But tools like Ansible, you're able to like modify it, you know, add security to it, add other stuff to it. That is what configuration management tools, what well, that's their job. But infrastructure as a code um, to what they do is just create the infrastructure and also monitor the state of the infrastructure. That's the job of infrastructure as a code. So um, so before I um I'll dive in into a prominent key part in infrastructure as a code, which is Terraform registry. So I'm going to go to this website now. Just permit me. Let me stop sharing so I can share my entire screen. Uh, just a minute. Window, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna open Terraform now. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Anyone? Yes, we can. Okay, good. So um, this is Terraform website. Oh, no, no, this is not the official website. Oh, this is the Terraform by Ashikop. This is Terraform website, and you can see it's it provides you much more information about infrastructure as a code. But I want to be particular about the registry part. So with Terraform registry, you have, so some people might be like, I want to get started with infrastructure as a code and I'm going with Terraform. How do I, where do I get started? So the registry is where you need to get started with. For example, it provides you key documentation about Azure, GCP, AWS, and other cloud platforms like Alibaba Cloud, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. But I'm going to be particular about it Azure because that's what we are working on today. So you can see this is the official documentation for Azure on Terraform. So this is it. You can create different stuff. So with uh, the registry, you're able to use the provider, which I'm still going to be explaining in the demo. Uh, you're able to, you know, use different modules for programmers. You'd be familiar with what modules, what they're about. So when I go to a module, you can see you can create a, no, let me be specific about a provider. You can create a VNet, which is a virtual network, you can create different tons of stuff. There are quite a lot that you can create. Is you can create a security group, Postgres, and the about. This is where you should rely on because I know things gradually change and I want to introduce you guys to the official documentation, so it's easier. So what I'm, what I'm a demo today might have changed. They might have added different dependencies. So with this um, registry on Terraform, you're able to keep up to date with, you know, some of the updates that Terraform is going to be adding and all that. So I will jump on to the next uh, um, thing on my slide, which is working with Terraform. So when you want to get started with Terraform, there are three, diff four different things you need to know, like very basic and modular stuff. You need to install the tool on your operating system. You can use, um, you can install it on Windows, Linux, Mac. Uh, for example, if I go back to um, Terraform, let me see, and I, you know, let me just type install Terraform. So it's going to show it. So we have an official documentation of how to install it on each one of these operating systems. So um, yeah, um, you have to install it. You have The next thing is configuration. 
you have to define resources for that particular cloud platform that you'll be you know, configuring infrastructure and resources. You can use variables, data sources, you can manage dependencies and states. I'm going to show you how to manage states on Terraform. You know, I mentioned that you can you know, collaborate among different teams. I'm going to show you how that is being done with uh, Terraform as well. So, and also you can use modules, like you can create your own module, you know, but uh, most times you don't have to go through the stress of creating modules. The idea um, create, um, created modules on, on the official documentation and you don't have to stress yourself. You just have to use it. So when you are writing Terraform code, there are three major steps. After you, you know, created the, the, the document, you now want to execute it. There are three types. You have to plan, apply, and destroy. Planning is more of like a, um, to check out everything you've, written, which I'm still going to show you. These terms might be new, but once I get on, you know, the practical steps, you would understand it more. So planning is more of like when you've written the code, it's more of like um, checking for any errors and knowing amount of infrastructure you want to create. Apply is then when you create each one of these infrastructure. Destroy means you can destroy it. Let me tell you a fun fact about Terraform and infrastructure as a code is that you know, normally, if you want to, if you create an, a resources on or infrastructure on a cloud platform, you have to go to the website, the Azure portal, and start deleting one after the other. With infrastructure as a code, you can easily just type a command and delete everything that is being configured in a particular part. It's very easy. Like it's a, it saves time and stress <laughs> because sometimes internet might be bad. You might be trying to, you know, configure some things. So also you you have to uh, execute the Terraform code and you can integrate Terraform with other services as well, such as Azure DevOps, AWS code pipeline and the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead with um, a quick demo of creating a, an Azure Kubernetes service and Azure Container Registry using Terraform. So I am going to go to it now. So I have here with me, no, let me open up uh, a new VS code. Just a minute, file. Um, new window, just a minute. I'm going to be sharing my screen again because I wasn't sharing my entire screen earlier. Um, a minute, entire screen, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, then. Can you, can you folks see it now? Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so I'll be fast about it because I know Asem also has a session as well. So um, this is a VS Code. I prefer using VS Code because it's easier. I'm using a Linux um, OS right now, but you can install um, Terraform on all of the other OS, Windows or Mac as well. So I would drop this link right now. So if you want to follow me along to create the infrastructure as a code or install it, this is it. So this is the link to install Terraform on your local PC, but I do have Terraform on my Linux. So I can just do Terraform help, it shows me all of the commands. Yeah, so I have it. Um, first step, first step is completed. So next thing you have to do is install Azure CLI. Why are we installing Azure CLI? Is because of the fact that you, um, Terraform is a third-party app. It is not Azure native. When I when I mean Azure native, Azure native tools are those tools that you don't need to authenticate too much. Like you don't need to. It's created by Microsoft for Microsoft tools or even other third-party tools as well. So the stress of you authenticating with it is more simpler and easier. So with um, Terraform, uh, Azure CLI, you can, so I also drop a link for you to install Azure CLI on your local PC, install Azure CLI. I already have it installed as well. So I'll drop the Microsoft Learn documentation. Uh, let me see. So sorry. I have so many tabs open. Yeah, this is it. So I'm going to drop this. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. So you can also install um, Azure CLI on your laptop 
So I have, I just say like installed already, AZ, I think version should give me that. I think so. Yeah, it's installed. So um, I don't have to worry about that. So I have the two most essential tools I need. And now I then go ahead to configure my Terraform files and also Azure resources. So I have a Git repo, GitHub repo that I have here that I created for this session that I'll share the link as well as along the slides. So, um, so I would then click on this. Let me clone it. Let me see which directory I'm in. It's, so let me see it into desktop. So it's easier for me to, to get clone. We can clone it. I'll be copying this as well in the in the charts. It's accessible. You can access it. Um, then I'll go ahead with let's see. So I have the repo here, Azure PKS, it's Terraform. I'm trying to be fast because I know we wasted 20 minutes. So the meeting, um, the session okay. is going to be is okay. being recorded. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I think I had some. Okay, nobody has any question there. So I'm going to quit um, this. So this is it. This I'm going to pop it out. So let's go back. So this, so let me list the file. Let me explain what files I have here. So we have a main.tf file. We have a variables file. Then we have some other files, which I'm going to explain. But let me explain it step by step, how everything works. So um, we are trying to use Terraform to create a, um, to create Azure Kubernetes Plus and Azure Container Registry, for us to then push an application there, which is going to work. So for us to do that, we need to create a main.tf file, which is the first thing we have to create, which is this. I'm going to be explaining each one of the key components. Uh, just let me close this. Each one of the key components here. And then we have to create a variables.tf. And the next, next thing we have to create is called the Terraform tf bars so uh, i go back here i didn't want to waste time to create everything from scratch so i will just explain how each one of these works so the first thing here is a backend for storing the state files so you know when i mentioned about the ability to collaborate and also know what your team members have worked on so a terraform state files need to be a terraform state file is more of like a status report of every infrastructure that has been created by that particular Terraform file. So um, on Azure, so you need to store a particular um, a file on Azure Blob Storage on Azure itself for it to authenticate with it. So next up, we have Terraform and its required providers. This is quite similar to um, the provider we saw here. Let me go back. I'll be fast because I know we're probably only on time and I don't want to delay anyone. But if you have any question, feel free to stop me. Um, so when I come here, I go to providers, I go to AWS and use providers. So you just basically you just copy this, put it in your main.tf. That is very much important because Terraform needs to know the version of that particular Azure um, Azure provider it has. So next up is specifying the provider and the features. Then next up, I create a resource group. So with Terraform, you know when I mentioned that instead of using a portal, you can create the resource group. So what this is doing is creating a resource group with 
um, Terraform. Um, so there are two naming conventions here. So this is the particular resource, and this is the, you can name this anything. I name it um, anything, just more of like just setting it variable in that particular um, uh, Terraform file. I can name this Terraform group RG, but I'll leave it as resource group. So next thing is you need to specify the name of the resource group. So you're setting a variable. So the, the best practice is that you don't configure everything. You set everything with parameters and variables. So um, I'm using a variable here to set everything. So the name, this is just, you know, merging to the variable and also additional words like the RG, the location. So when you're creating resources on Azure, you need to specify the location. So I'm um, also specifying the location with the variable. And then I come here to create the resource of uh, the Azure Container Registry resource, which then I specify the name using the variable. I also reference. So in Terraform, it's more of like a programming language, but it uses a particular type of um, syntax as well. Uh, so with Terraform, you can reference a particular resource you've created. So it's um, a declarative way of writing code. So you come, if you look at it, I created a resource group and I want to also use the same resource group to create my ACL. A resource group is more of like a container. So I want to ensure that everything I'm, I'm going to be creating in this course has just one, it's being put into one resource group. So you can see, I'm going to reference this particular resource group, the name resource group and the name, the location as well. This is it here. Then the standard, these are, these are you don't have to come up with all this and, uh, from your head. There are documentation you can read up on, like, like I mentioned, these things change and you know, it's, it's going to be quite um, tedious for us to keep track of it. So, Terraform has its uh, documentation that you can follow and copy it and just change a few things. So um, also you can, this is default. So the next up, I want to create the EKS cluster, the, the resource, I name it. This is the particular um, resource um, default name. And I have to specify the name, I want to name it in my, um, my main.tf. I can name it um, EKS, with cluster or anything, but I'm going to leave it as default. Then the name, I specify the name using um, variables, the location. Remember, we want to place it in the container, the resource group we created. We're going to do the same, the location, the name. And they, uh, it's important to also set the DNS prefix. So if you are new to Kubernetes and, you know, um, uh, creating EKS, you don't need to worry too much. This is just an answer on experience um, demo of creating one. So you then set the node pool and all that. Then is AKS service principal client ID is required. Then the password, I'm going to show you how to create this because it's very much important to create it. Then the role-based um, access control outback, very much important. Then the tags, this is optional, but I decided to add it anyway. So um, what's the next step for me? So. I need to create the storage to store the state file. So I come here, I created a script. So if you have this um, particular repo on your local PC, you should see what I'm seeing as well. So I created a script called Azure resource group name with, um, so this is to create a resource group with a storage account and also create a blob um, storage from it. So with the name TF state. So what I have to do is just, First of all, remember if you've installed um, if you've installed Azure CLI, you need to log in, AZ login. So I'll be required to log in my credentials. I'm going to be using my student ambassadorship account because I have, I have Azure credits there. So I, I just have to wait for it to authenticate. It's loading. Um, so yes, good. So next. I have to run the bash script. So this is just to save me time from typing all of this manually. So I just do it, oh, sorry. So bash creates Terraform storage. 
Uh, just is is creating the resources now. So it's created the the what's the name? The resource group you can see. Creating the, the storage account as well. Yeah, this same false. Why is it same false? This is because I've created um, previously this particular storage account, but uh, it's just referencing back to it. Um, so I'll go back. We we'll go to the main.tf file. Notice that it's the same. You have to specify it. There are from the storage, um, the resource group name, the um, storage name, the con um, the container, and the key. The, the key is the Terraform states that is going to be created. I'm going to show you where this is going to appear from. So I'm going to show you once I init initialize um, Terraform. So we've got the first stuff up and running. Created the storage account. Now we need to create something called an active directory service principal. Why are we creating this? This is needed by AKS and it's part of the parameters we are going to be putting into the variables for Terraform. So I'm going to be quick. So we create this, we paste it. Anyways, so I do have the commands here. No, 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 no. So when you create this uh, service principal, so sorry, so sorry. Is it SP creates for IBAC? This allows you to oh, sorry, to create this. So you have the password and the app ID. This is going to be the book very soon, anyways. So um, let me just copy this. Copy it. Uh, just a minute. Copy it. Then I copy the password. Yeah, so I have copied both of them. So the next thing is we then have to create um create the tf verse. Wow. So first thing we have to do is you know we have a variable um the variable in the main.tf contains all of the uh, important resources we need to create. But now in the variables file is where you specify the variables, the type of resources and all that. The tfvars is where you put the values. So the first, what's the first variable we have? ACR name. So I'm come to ACR name. So value. So um, next thing. I have, I'm going to set the value just a minute, uh, EKS name. The next one was the value, um, resource group name, which is the resource group we are going to be hosting the container registry as well as the EKS. The next one is location. Location, very much important. This is location for each one of the resources. Then the Azure service clients, um, principal client ID, which is what we created with the command I imputed earlier. Yeah, so VS Code helps me. That's why I love VS Code. It helps me to save time. So the ID and the password. So I have to set, let me set the ID, the password first. So I think I see the password somewhere. So this is the password. I can oh it's cleared it up. I can reference the password first. That's the password and the ID. This is the ID. This is by ID. Yeah, it's all there. So we just have to set the ACL name. So we can set um demo demo twenty and we set EKS demo 2026 as well. Let's uh, EKS demo 2026. 26. Then the resource group name, we can say demo 2026 with location. Uh, I have to be 
US East. Yeah, that works. Let me show that. Uh, yeah, so now we've specified the parameters, then we go ahead with Terraform. So I'll be quick with it. So the first thing we need to do is Terraform init. It's going to initialize the backend. So it's waiting. So it's um, getting the fetching the changes. So it has to install the version. This provider is going to install it. And see, it's installing it with this version. Just let's give it some minutes to fully install in. Uh, it's still installing just a minute. I know we have a several sessions, so I'm trying to be fast about it. Uh, just a minute. Let me come back here to see if anyone has any question. Okay. Uh, people are saying the call. Good. So um, let me go back to check. It's still installing. Hi, hi, hi. Why is it taking so long? And just to see the creation on time. Uh, I see installing just few one more minute, let's see. Uh -huh. so let's see, let's see. But well, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay. Um okay, yes, it's done now. So um, the state file is going to also be there. So let me show you guys something before I move on to creating the resources. So um, speedily, I'm going to go to Azure portal. Although I, I did mention that you don't have to work with Azure portal, but uh, I don't, oh wait, let me show you something. Show, sorry, I have to Google search it. Storage with log. Uh, using yeah, just quickly. No, I'm not deleting just a minute. Okay, let me use the butter because I don't have time to delay you guys because I have to wait. wait. So I'm going to come here. Logging in now. This is why the portal, you can see how easy it was to create the resources. The internet might be bad, it can take quite some time for you to even log in into your portal. And the, if, the more advanced you are with infrastructure as a code, you, you will know the importance of it. Of, because the portal is quite slow, very slow as compared to using uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, I don't know. Website is taking too long. I want to log in. Okay. Signing in now. Okay, it's in portal is very slow. Depending on your internet though. My internet is bad today. So I'm trying to 
So, um, yes, so I'm into my portal now. So I'm going to go to the resource group. So you can see uh, Terraform State RG has been created. The Terraform storage has been created. Then we want to confirm if the blob storage is there. So containers. Yes. So this is the blob storage. You can see the TF state is there. This is what I mean by with this, if any other person across on that team wants to you know, create additional resources, they will be able to see the state of resources created in that particular Azure account. So I'm going to rush now to create our infrastructure um, as soon as possible. So now, platform, um, plan first, let's plan. Let's see, this is the first uh, part, you know, I mentioned that you use plan. Oh, so sorry, I think I missed something there. Yes. Just a minute. File client ID. So I'll go ahead again. So I think I missed something there. So I'm uh, no, it, not in it. There are form plan now. And yep, uh, let's go. Should work now. Except I did. Okay. It's it's acquiring the state log. The first time you run all of this, it might take some time, but continually when you use that same um, configuration, it's going to be way faster. So I think the location. So um, it's actually asking East US. I knew there was something wrong with this. So it's not US East. It's actually East US. So it's East US. I was just uh, so these are the errors that would occur. <laughs> uh the errors in terraform makes it easy for you to know what's going on so um just a minute uh it's a digital one so i want to be fast for anselmo to also do his demo okay yes so if there are no errors now three resources to add then i'm going to do terraform Apply. So you can see this. This is why I meant by you see it's showing all of the things it's going to create. Terraform is it's um, infrastructure as a code as you is quite um, interesting and uh, saves time. So it's um, taking the state lock. So uh, it's going to create the resources. So it's asking me, do I want to? create the resources, I'll say yes. So now it's going to create the resources. So it's going to take some while to create. So I will switch, so it's creating now. So I'm going to switch over to Anselmo to do his demo. So then we'll come back when Anselmo is done because of time. I don't want to delay you guys and um, take so much time. So let's go back to Anselmo doing his demo and explaining the other infrastructure as a code to we have called Bicel. So um, Anselmo, I would pass it over to you now. Thank you. Yeah, so I think I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Mm. Oh, you're sharing your screen, right? 
Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, okay. Good. Oh. Yes, sir. So, um, we're going to go through like what's bicep. Bicep is kind of new. So, I'm going to take you guys through it. Yeah, so um, bicep is a domain specific language. I mean, uh, you cannot use it outside the Azure uh, domain. So, for example, uh, if you want to deploy your infrastructure, uh, that means that you cannot use BICEP on something like AWS or or any other cloud or GCP. You use it specifically for Azure. So, uh, if if your needs are just like your 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 whole infrastructure will be on Azure, that means you can you can be able to use BICEP and Initially, before BICEP was built by Microsoft, the, uh, we were using uh, Azure Resource Manager, ARM templates. ARM templates are just like JSON templates. They look like JSON. So for example, I can show you one example of a, of a, they're still there so people can use them. So for example, they look like this. So they look like JSON files. So you, you are able to specify your configurations. But now for, for BICEP, it's more of like, it's more of like Terraform. Also, like the syntax is almost the same, but yeah, they're a bit different, but almost the same. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah because working with JSON when you're when you're trying to to deploy infrastructure and, and you're writing ARM templates, it's a bit harder. Like using those those quotes and all, it's a bit it's a bit harder to manage them. But for for BICEP, it's it's a bit easier, and also it's easy to learn. Yeah. So uh, basically, before you use Azure, you need to install uh, Azure command line, Azure CLI. Also, you, after after installing Azure CLI, now you can install Bicep. So um, to install Bicep, I'm sure, yeah, you can you can see uh, once you have Azure, you can be able to you can be, you can be able to install via the via the, the Microsoft documentation. You can be able to install it. I don't know where. I think. To somewhere up here. Oh, it's here. Yeah, you can be able to just do Azure AZ Bicep install, and you'll be able to have your installation. Yeah. So, so today I'm going to take you through. So I'm going to go through a demo, a small demo here. So we are going to deploy cloud infrastructure for a fast API application. So it will, it's going to be using. We're going to, to to deploy it on Azure App Service, and it, it's going to to use the PostgreSQL. So Azure database for Postgres, PostgreSQL. Yeah, so I'm going to shift to my VS Code. Yeah, so um, so when you're when you're setting your infrastructure with Bicep, uh, you need also to like structure your files really well. So uh, they usually recommend that you just use them the way they are in the documentation. For example. If it's if it's Postgres, you just write Microsoft dot DB for PostgreSQL. Then inside there, you just follow what the documentation is having. So, for example, I'm going to show you an example. So, for example, if you are you are you are doing maybe SQL, maybe you can just use any here. Yeah, if you are using so, for example, if you are you are you are using SQL, so you'll have SQL as a folder. Then inside that folder, you can have maybe an maybe the server so you love to lead this file so you just like arrange them like that so maybe you can shift to bicep here yeah so you can have uh these are the this as the folder then server as the file the bicep file servers.bicep so I've, I've done that for our case here so you can see we are having things we're having inside the servers we're having some firewall rules In, inside these we're having uh the server Bicep, and you can see here for the versions, you can see this Microsoft here, like that. So you need to, like, you need to to use that format. It's the best practice for, for, for when using Bicep. Yeah. Then uh, when stating your um, your your variables, like I've seen Terraform as variables. This one for 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 Bicep, you can use parameters. or can also there is also a data type called there, there is something called var. I think you can use that also. That means it's a variable. It means it's changing. But for parameter, it means most of the time it will be just static unless you come and change it, change the value yourself. You come and change the configuration. Yeah. So this is like just the basic the basic uh, way of stating your infrastructure. So for for example, this one is for the server. Then 
uh, when you're setting the Azure app service. So for the app service here, you can see, uh, you can see here I'm, I'm stating the location of, of the app of the resource. I'm, I'm also able to state the name. I'm also able to state like the, the properties. And for example, if obviously the app service is relating to the app service plan, the plan that you are having. So you'll, you'll be able to state the plan ID. Yeah, so that, but if you want to do that, you need to, uh, for, 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 for normal programming languages, we usually import something. So if you need a file or, or a variable from another file, you need to import that file. But for basic, that's not the case. You need to, if you already, if, if, if you have, if you already have, if you have, if you already have that resource, you just need to, to state the resource normally, then have an existing keyword here. So that means that you, it tells Azure that already you have that resource, so it's, it will just reuse what it already has. Yeah, so it, it will just reuse uh, the app service plan because app service plan is the parent resource. Then app service is the like the child resource. Yeah. Then, uh, then after you've done this, you can see here after you've done this, this one is for source control. If you want to have CI/CD, you want to set up GitHub, uh, GitHub on Azure, you can use this resource here. So you can see even here I'm pasting the, the 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 link to the repo in GitHub. Yeah. So it will be able to set that up on Azure, then link link it and also write for you a pipeline to, to do CI. So once you you like push your code, it's able to again restart that application. Yeah. So um after you've done that, uh, so you, so for example, you have you have maybe you, you also need the same same resource. You will not you will not you will not have to like state the same same resource the second time. This will be like duplication. You will be duplicating the code. So what you do you usually use modules. So this one is, this one is a resource. But now if you want to to have modularity in your code, you need to there's some there's a keyword called modules. So to do this, I'll move to this. You can see here topology. Topology means like the, like the all the resources together. What they like they form the server the database the the app service and the plan everything so here um you can see i'm using i'm using the module so if i write module i do want to move to that to that to that to that directory and i'll reference the those bicep files here as you can see here so as you can see i've, I've referenced all those all those files here, the, 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 server, the, server, the server, which is the app service plan, the site, which is the, the app service, then the PostgreSQL server, then um, the firewall rules. We are just having the server because uh, for PostgreSQL server in Azure, you don't need to state, if, to state the database. It's called Azure, Azure PostgreSQL single server. So it has the database into it. So you don't need to state like the database resource. Yeah, so you just have the server only. And you can state the the data the, the the password and the username. Yeah. So this is just the modules. So for example, if I need if I need this if I need another another resource, for example, if I need another app service, what I can do, I'll just I'll just again do module again. Yeah. Then reference reference that that file. So I'll just reuse what I already have on those parameters. Yeah. So um, I'm going to to shift to to my terminal so that we can deploy this infrastructure here. So um, to deploy this infrastructure, you need um, you need a command called az deployment group create. Then you can state the file. So you'll, I'll move to as you can see here. I've moved to all those modules. So I'll be what I'll be deploying is is are these modules here. Yeah. So as you can see here. Um, I'm, 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 I'm referencing like this, this, this product by say, which has all the resources that we need for the infrastructure. So I'm going to, to press that. Then, then since, since uh, I've set the, as you can see here, I've set the administrator, administrator login and the password as secure. So if you do this, you cannot. Ex ex explicitly like put the the value so what you need is uh 
if you, if you do that, it will automatically tell you to to put the values. So I'll just like write that, then it will be, it will deploy it on Azure. Then you can check it. I'll shift to Azure. Yeah. So I'll just put that. And I'll put this. Yeah. So it will start deploying. So let me shift to Azure. I will refresh that. Mm. Just a minute. Yeah, so it has started deploying on Azure. So if I, if I refresh this, um, yeah, so you can see it's deploying, so trying to deploy the plan. So it, it, it you can see here prod, prod means we have, we have all the resources in this, 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 was, this was the module file. So we have all the, like all the resources here. We will have all the resources listed here that we are deploying. So for, for now it's just doing the, 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 the service plan. Why, why is it deploying the service plan first? It's deploying that because, as you can see here, I've, I've said the site depends on the server farm. So that means we need the Azure app service plan first. Then after that is deploy, deploying, we move to the app service, the, the, uh, the, the app service. After the app service, you can see here, the server depends on these two. So you need to have uh, the, the, the the, the, the app service plan and also the app service. So after these two are deployed, then this one will be deployed. After that, then the firewall rules will, de will be deployed because it depends on all the the, 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 the above three, the, 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 these three resources up here, yeah. So that's why it's deploying the three, the, 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 the plan first. So you can see here, it's deploying now, like it has deployed at the app service, now it's moving to the server. Maybe I can just refresh this. Sometimes you need to. Yeah, so it's it has finished deploying the server, so it's on the firewalls. Then after that, I think it will be done. So if I go to the resource group, the resource groups. Um, here I can go to, come to this resource group, and I can see I have I have the. The, the 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 app service have the plan and I also have the server here and also I have all the the configurations of the same. So and also and also you can uh, I I didn't I didn't, I didn't deploy the the resource for GitHub but if you want to to do what to to make Azure access it on GitHub, what you do, just come here to deployment center, then you connect, you connect it to, to GitHub. So this thing, yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, you need to connect it to GitHub, I go to settings, yeah, you can see here, so you can just, I can, I can, you can disconnect this, if I disconnect this, you can just like connect, then you choose your repo, for choosing your repo, uh, you choose the branch, and if and you just click save, yeah, so it will be able to, to, to connect to the repo. So for the repo, the repo is here. Mm, the, yeah, the repo is here. Mm, it's public. Uh, it also has a pipeline. So if you do that, automatically it creates for you a pipeline. It creates for you a pipeline to do the deployment. So 
it creates for you up on GitHub Actions. So it does that for you. Yeah, so um, I can even I can even try to run to run the pipeline again. Uh, I can just run all the, all the jobs. Yeah, so um, also I just have something small I want to talk about. So uh, as you can see here, I'm having um, so for example after you've created your modules modules so for example we are having here all these modules so what you what, what if you want to visualize like what you have on azure what you'll be having on azure so uh for this you need to have you need to have uh what are they called uh just a minute I've forgotten yeah extensions <laughs> i've forgotten yeah so it, it should have an extension called just bicep it's it's verified by microsoft so if you have that you can visualize your 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 like the whole the whole bicep template so you can see here you can just magnify this and you can see you can see what, everything that you have uh, just a minute mm. no. yeah so you can see here you can see like everything that you have the server farm like how they depend on each other so you can see here the server the file are in the same place because you need the server to have these firewall rules then you can see here you have the server farm and you can see this arrow if, if, if it's depending on something the arrow will point twice it depends because the the app service is depending it, 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 it depends on the, the the app service plan so you can see like what you have or you can visualize your infrastructure on that will be you'll be having on azure yeah, so I think everything everything is okay. We are having all these resources. Uh, our pipeline has run correctly. Then I think we have now this uh, this link to our. I think this link is is here. You can just go come to this to this uh, resource here. I don't know if it will run. Yeah, it's here. This link is usually here. Mm, I think you're having a problem. So maybe I'll just move to the diagnostic resources like and see what, so that you can see the logs, like what happened. But I think if the problem can be on the application itself. Yeah, maybe as it's loads, I'll, I'll also talk about something small. Uh, so as you can see, I'm, 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 I'm explicitly like telling, telling each parameter that this is your variable, this is your variable. But for best practices, you, do, you don't, you should not do this. Uh, you should, you should have something called a parameter file. So to have a parameter file, I'll, I don't have it on this branch. I'll have having it on. So I'll just share like my my GitHub. So I'll come here. So this is another branch. So uh, you can see here I'm having the same same. I'm having the same same. You can see here. I'll, I'll, I'll just maybe I'll just go back. Then um, I'll come here. Yeah. So you can see I'm having the an environment a topology. So we're just having this directory environment so that, for example, if you have a resource, resources that need to go on the developer environment, you can create that that uh, that bicep file. Also, you can create a separate bicep file for production. So you deploy on development environment. Then after that, you can now deploy that the the, the full the, the exact thing on pro, on the production environment. So I'll just click this. As you can see, I've created now. I'm just having one module on the bicep file. Initially, we had a lot of modules. So for now, we just have like one module, which is referencing all those other modules that we had. You can see it's going to topology, then pro, then product bicep on the topology directory. Then it's taking all these. So as you can see, you don't need to do, you should, for best practices, you don't do this. So you don't do this, like you don't explicitly uh, specify what the value. So what you do, you need to have a parameter file. So if you have a parameter file, you just specify the exact name 
the, the exact parameter, the one that you've written in the bisect file, then you, you just give it a value, you give it a value like that, like that. So when you are deploying, you're not now, when you're deploying, so let's say from the terminal, what you'll do, you'll write this, then you'll do slash slash parameters. Then you'll, you'll give the name of your JSON file. Then you just, um, you just click enter and it will be able to deploy. So for best practices, you use the, this JSON file, use a JSON file to set up your parameters. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I think that's over. I think I'll just move to the, uh, so I think, yeah, I think I think the problem is on the application itself because I think it does not have the UV con for first API you need this so that your application can run correctly. So I don't I think the the problem is just on the application itself, but our infrastructure is okay. Yeah. So I think I'll fix that for guys who will wish to to check the, the that repo or just fix it before the day ends. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think my demo is, is over for for time, yeah. Can, yeah. Back to you, Mohammed. Yeah, thank you so much, Anselmo. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, so um, I'm going to start sharing my screen just to, I know we are probably like six, six minutes uh, before we um, end the session, but uh, luckily for us, we are able to stay with time as well. Uh, just a minute. Let me share my entire screen. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, as you can see, my resources has been created. So I've created the cluster, the container registry, and the resource group. So let's go to the Azure portal now. Let's, let's go check it out. So let me refresh. So you can see demo 2 2026 has been created. And I have my ACL and my AKS there, both of them, live and uh, well and alive. So um, that shows that Terraform did uh, um, create it. And so with this, um, we're able to see how Terraform is able to like, you know, configure infrastructure and also monitor the state. So uh, for example, if I'm able to, if, if I, for example, lose any of these files here, like for example, if I, if I take this particular repo and because there's something it stores, let me explain why we um, stored the state file, which is the backend in a particular storage. So um, Terraform stores something called a Terraform state file. So you can see this explains how the infrastructure are being created, the status and all that. You can see it's right here. So let's say for example, I automatically um, let me see. Delete this. Let me see. Uh, let me just hide this. Sorry. Terraform uh, fan. Let me. So if I see Terraform Terraform plan now, it's going to show me that there's nothing to be created. Um, just a minute, please. It's fetching the data. So it's refreshing, it's refreshing. It, it, so with Terraform, we can see that automatically it's um, it's already no infrastructure, you infra, uh, no changes, your infrastructure matches the configuration. So let's say, for example, I delete the state file, the Terraform state file now. Terraform state file. And because this is what we, uh, Azure, um, Terraform used to monitor Azure resources. Let me delete it. So remember that I've already configured the storage to always have this. So I'll just do Terraform plan again. You see, so you can see. So I need to run Terraform init. I need to run the init to initialize the state. Initializing backend again. It's trying to fetch the data. So it's going to fetch this as class states from Azure storage. So you use it now. Uh, so so when I do Terraform plan now, 
still going to uh, I'm just going to allow it to refresh. So you can see it's refreshing, it's refreshing. Um, so no changes are still being made. So with this, um, this points out that with Terraform, you can collaborate with your team members to, you know, um, work on even some person might be deploying different stuff and all of you will still have the same version. So far you have, a, um, you're storing the state file to uh, a storage on Azure, on the block storage as well. So with this now I can delete Terraform destroy um, the configuration to save credits of uh, the resources I've created to save credits. So you can see so acquiring the state log. Just take a few moments. Question. Yeah, so it's asking me, do I want to delete um, plan? No, change, no, destroy. Yes, I want to delete all of the resources. We have one with destroy, yeah, it's going to destroy it. So, um, just some minutes. So this will take some while for it to destroy all of the resources. So um, let me go back to the slide to continue where we stopped and round up the event. So now, what are the differences between, we've, as someone has done a demo of Bicep, I've done a demo of Terraform, what are the comparisons? So the comparison is that the syntax is quite different. You can see, uh, Ash, um, Terraform uses ASHICOP configuration language, which is called a, an HCL, and it uses a DSL. Um, I think I, I, I will get the full meaning for this. I, I think I missed it out. So um, that has its own syntax and, gram and grammar. Bicep on the other hand uses a simplified and readable syntax that is similar to YAML and JSON. So there's what um, Bicep does called transpilation. So what Ansemo first showed with the Azure Resource Manager template is the JSON format for, um, that was what was first used to configure infrastructure. But later on, Bicep was created, I think 2020 to work like a, an actual infrastructure as a code tool. And behind the hood, Actually, there's a process that whatever code you write in Bicep is being transformed into an Azure Resource Manager template, and then uses to create the uh, the, the infrastructure on as an, an Azure. So, and also integration. Bicep is specifically used um, for with Azure resources, and is fully integrated with Azure tools such as Azure CLI, PowerShell. Terraform does support Azure, but it supports a wide range of other cloud providers as well. So you can see it's, Terraform is open source. It can be used on GCP, AWS, and the rest of them. But Bicep is specifically for Azure. So that, let's put that in mind. That's the key difference there. So, and also uh, the maturity and community support. I think Bicep is just like I say, three years old or four years old. Why Terraform has been in the ecosystem for, I think more than five, six years, even 10 years. So it's or definitely has more community support than Bicep and the larger community as well. So, and so what are the best practices for infrastructure as a whole? Designing for modularity and usability. I think as um, as someone showed how he was able to like use different modules for different things. So one thing you should keep in mind is that whenever you are creating infrastructure, you should design for mod modularity, which is you should create something in modules for other team members or cross department can use this is very much important and also the usability. Whether you are working on your personal project, whether you want to change some things, you should create, um, that's one of the best practice for you and also one of the key importance of infrastructure as a code. And also partial control. This is very much important with um, the state file I mentioned. So with a, you deploying it on the, um, on the web server, it, it shows the, the state file for something 
like the infrastructure as a whole to like JF1. But if you are using Bicep, be sure to also uh, push your Bicep code on um, Git or even Azure DevOps um, repos so that you can also keep track of uh, different changes that have been made. So um, also you should test and validation. So there's a tool called Check Now for Terraform, which you can use and check Terraform um, files for security threats and all that. So if you're to create a particular resource or infrastructure on Azure or other cloud platforms, this particular skill called CheckNob allows you to check if it's complies with the standard of security. And also for CICD, it's very much important. What we just showed today is a standalone. In most organizations, you don't just see uh, them creating all this uh, just for personal projects. You see them whenever a, big, a code is being pushed to a particular um, website or some of the source code, it runs the pipeline which creates the infrastructure, integrates with other tools, and also creates the app and also push the changes. So yeah, um, that um, lets me check back on my VS Code to see if it has finished deleting. So it's still deleting the resources. Um, it's going to take some while to delete the. I think it's deleting the resource group now. Um, so it's just going to take some while to delete the resource group. There's I mean, yeah. Is this deleting can we just share something uh, for on best practices? What do you say? I'm, I'm, I, I want to share something on best practices. Okay, you can try it. Yeah. So um, so on best practices, so you've talked about CICD and also you've talked about like the modularity. So. I have a template like someone can use. So, for example, I, as I was saying, uh, you create you, you create the modules, then you, you follow like how the documentation is structured. So, I think you can also do this the same. I don't know how structure for works clearly, but you can also do this. So, you 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 create these folders here. Then, if you are if you are deploying some product, so you can specify the environment. So, if it's developer, you just say if it's dev, or you can give it a longer name. Then, if it's prod, also you can do that. Then, uh, you find, but you first create the topology. Then, after the topology, you create a module that references now the topology in the environment directory. Yeah. So once you do that, uh, you can do you can deploy it via via your your terminal like this, or you can also create a pipeline. So for this template, we are already have a pipeline created. So it's just you like putting the, the, the values, then it will be able to deploy your infrastructure to Azure. So this, this, this is a template, this is a, a pipeline for Azure template. So Azure DevOps, I mean, yeah, Azure pipeline. So uh, you can see here, I've, you, you, you just need to set up the your service connection name. So service connection is, you don't need to, you don't need to, you see the way you're doing uh, Azure login on terminal, AZ login, to login on, so that you can you can be able to deploy your infrastructure. So for for service connection, it it, it will not use your credentials to log into Azure. It will use managed identity. Like it will be automatic instead of using your credentials because that would be a bit harder. Like logging in, it will use a managed identity. So you create a service connection on Azure DevOps. Then you just provide here the name. Then you, pro, you can you can change here the product name to something that you, are, you want you, the name that you want then you set your subscription id yeah then after setting your subscription id you, you set the resource group name for a case to sun it was social media dot sandbox or something yeah so you set the you just set the resource group name then you set the location yeah so that if it's east us west us like that then this is just linting so to make sure that your code base is okay does not doesn't have errors then you can you, you you can give you the path to, to to that file the path to those files the same here what you do so here you'll just be referencing these variables here for for this one so this one will be you can change, just change this product name to this one here then you, then it should be able to work so once you run this pipeline you can set up the pipeline on azure DevOps, then it will be able to work yeah so this is just like uh, some best practices that you need to follow when using Bicep. Yeah. Let me. Yeah, thank you so much, Anselmo. And, yeah. And Welcome. we are also going to share the repo. I'm going to share the slide with everyone uh, with uh, in the Meetup page. And also, if you need the slide, um, 
you can also reach out to us. I'm going to be dropping the emails so you can you can send it to you as well. So I'm going to share the final um status of the sources I created, I destroyed rather. So so I'm going to go back to my VS code. You can see um destroy completed, it has destroyed three resources. So when I go back to Azure portal to stack it, let me refresh. Yeah, so the resources have been destroyed. The resource group has been destroyed, and that's it. These are all other um, default ones I created manually on Azure Portal or for and for other projects. So yeah, that is that is um, the end of the session today. And let me go back. No, just a minute, please. So that's the end of the session today, and uh, I would do the next stuff is for you guys to get the learning resources to learn bicep, Terraform if you want, and also some articles that I wrote on infrastructure as a code, if you want to deploy your, your personal website, that, which is static, or if you want to also learn about, and also we'll be dropping, we'll be adding the GitHub repositories for both bicep and Terraform for uh, and someone and myself. Yeah, thank you so much. If there are any questions, we'll take it. Um, I know we've gone like 10 minutes over time, but I'm happy that we're able to cover it. Any questions, guys? Any question? Uh, you can ask if you want to learn about um, infrastructure as a code, if you want to work on projects, if you want to, we have different, um, I'll also be sharing some repositories that I think that would be helpful for beginners. And also, you can check out Microsoft Learn if you want to learn about um, Bicep. It's um, open to everyone. You can also learn about it from there as well and have hands on experience. So, if there are no questions, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording right now. So, uh, we'll be uploading on the YouTube channel. So, you can always go back to rewatch it. Uh, it's always there for you too. And you can reach out to Anselmo or myself. If you have any questions, thanks so much, everyone.